Yeah, well, welcome from Munich. <laughs> um, sorry that I couldn't be here on site with you. So I will do more or less the complementary part what Daniel has just shown, meaning the uh, talking about the satellite infrastructure of, of GIGOS, uh, complementing then the, uh, the terrestrial part. And also as an overview slide, uh, of course, we can as GIGOS not uh, um, buy missions. Uh, but we can advocate them and we can put pressure and make sure uh, that genetic missions that are relevant for GIGOS uh, can happen. Uh, and uh, this is, I think, one of the, the most important things here, uh, which is also mentioned here. And what we are also doing is to assess uh, what is in place, uh, what would be needed to really reach the GIGOS 2020 goals and also doing simulations uh, to to validate this. So, um, as Daniela has already mentioned, uh, at least from a, let's say, European perspective, the last year was a very successful one. So, Daniela already mentioned the, the Genesis mission, um, which can also be a very nice link between uh, the satellite mission standing committee and the PLATO in the future. Um, and another um, success was that also uh, in parallel to Genesis, the, the magic mission, uh, at least the, the um, ESA part, which is called NGGM, uh, was also approved um, at the ESA ministerial conference uh, in November last year. Uh, and it's now in a few weeks or months going into B1, so in the, in the first phase of, of implementation. Uh, and what we did here is uh, to more or less set the grounds and also organized, uh, let's say, user needs for this. And we are doing simulations as well uh, to justify uh, these these missions, which from from the gravity field perspective uh, would lift the observation system compared to GRACE and GRACE follow on a next level regarding spatial and temporal resolution, for example. Still, we want, of course, achieve the very ambitious GIGOS goals for gravity, but it's a step uh, towards uh, this direction, at least. So uh, one of the very important things which we also managed to do during the last uh, year is that uh, we made it happen that terrestrial water storage was adopted as a, an essential climate variable. So it was adopted in the list of, uh, of uh, by GCOS uh, of essential climate variables. And this is important as a, in, in the background because terrestrial water storage, at least the change of terrestrial water storage, is the key observation uh, you get from, from a gravity mission. And it's uh, very important also in future activities and future proposals to directly address that we are directly observing an essential climate variable. And to support and foster this further, we also achieved to get an IOGG resolution in, in Berlin uh, this year on this sustained terrestrial water storage monitoring by dedicated gravity satellite constellations. This is also, uh, on the one hand, the support, a uh, further support of, of MAGIC and the next phases of MAGIC on the one hand, but also uh, about even future technologies, uh, hot topic currently is, for example, quantum technologies, measurement technologies uh, to be implemented in very future gravity field missions. And uh, this should set again the ground to express that there is a huge uh, user need, um, especially then also for the use, for the operational use of, of, of gravity field products. And I will talk later on a little bit that this is one of the key issues in addition to what we have currently with GRACE and, and GRACE follow on. So the current situation on, on the MAGIC mission is that uh, this is a collaboration mission between NASA and ESA, in principle separated. So, uh, the, 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 the NASA pair is more or less already guaranteed uh, by a giant NASA DLR uh, corporation, so funded by US and Germany and should go uh, into orbit in 2028 in the frame of, of the uh, mass change designated observable program at, at NASA, and uh, which is more or less a, a follow on mission for GRACE follow on. And what we would like to complement on either side and European side is an inclined pair, uh, which a target, target launch date in 2031 uh, or 32, 
which is complementing the polar bear and uh, can be shown that this increases significantly temporal and spatial res uh, resolution on the one hand and it reduces our biggest enemy regarding errors in this uh, uh, gravity field motion missions, which is the striping, uh, which is resulted from temporal aliasing, which can be reduced significantly by means of these inclined pairs or by means of this double pair mission concepts. So uh, we were also part of a magic science support study, several institutions complementing the, uh, instrument, uh, the, the, the industry activities in this direction. As just mentioned, we are now at the very end of, of phase uh, A and we will go soon in, in the next phase, in the implementation phase. Um, and uh, here we investigated and it did tons of simulations to find out the best uh, constellations, tuning the orbit parameters, uh, tuning instruments and so on. Yeah, uh, just to mention, uh, as uh, maybe as, a, as, as the final slides, what is what is really the, the, the biggest impact here, as mentioned already beforehand, you know, if you are looking at current Grace and Grace for Home products, that they are quite stripy. And by means of the uh, addition of a second, especially inclined pair, one can show that you can improve significantly the error structure. And this automatically also means that you can achieve significantly higher spatial resolutions. And due to the second pair, you can also significantly increase uh, temporal resolutions. And you, could, you can do also a lot more regarding processing, of course. Uh, what is quite interesting is if you look really at the relative contributions of the currently planned polar and the inclined pair is that in the covered areas of the inclined pair, meaning plus minus 70 degrees latitude, the inclined pair is really the dominant one. So there's, this is more or less the, the main performance driver is the inclined pair because the inclined pair by itself has already very important uh, DLSing capabilities. And uh, maybe as a really important next step, and this is also very important to justify such a uh, mission in, in ESA, is that there is a direct societal impact, and this societal impact is measured by contributions to operational services, Copernicus services, and so on. And therefore, this is really would really be a next step, the second pair, uh, because then we really could go towards use of gravity field products also for drought, flood monitoring water management applications and more uh, and this is uh, um, much better possible with such an extended constellation than uh, uh, currently where we have some limitations regarding spatial and temporal resolution for these operational applications yeah this was a quick overview on, on of the last year basically <laughs>